Welcome back to another episode of Growing with the Beard. Today I wanted to cover back guano, what its uses are, how do you use it, and why is it important for your soils. Now back guano is a type of organic fertilizer that comes in a powdered or a pelletized form. Now different bag guanos are either going to be higher in nitrogen or higher in phosphorus and it really depends on the region that they come from and what their diet is. Now some bats thrive off of insects, some actually like fruit instead. So obviously the ones that are higher, that are eating insects more, are going to be higher in nitrogen just because of their exoskeleton which is going to have more nitrogen and then the ones that eat fruit are going to be higher in phosphorus because your fruits typically are higher in phosphorus. Now it also depends on what region that these are coming from. I know typically out of Peru you're going to have higher nitrogen because those bats do love to eat on insects and your Indonesian bats are the ones that are going to be more higher in phosphorus because their diet is higher in fruit. Now on the ones that eat higher insects that with the higher nitrogen you also have high forms of chitin in it. Now chitin is an essential compound that is needed for the soil fungus to grow and expand and is also a major component of the fungal cell wall membranes. Basically what that means is it's helping to feed all of that fungus that is in your soils to help improve soil retention. It can help to loosen up your soil as well. And it also does improve the fertile, how fertile your soil is going to be. Now some of the benefits of bat guano is that they are chocked full of your macronutrients, which is your nitrogen, your phosphorus, and your potassium. Now it also will help soil improvement and it does that by helping make dense soils lighter and holds loose soils together a little bit better. It is also not easily washed away from your soil like giving it certain salts so that way when you go through a large rainstorm most of that's going to stay there versus some of your inorganic materials. Now also bat guano supplies more than just nutrients. Now it does have a lot of microorganisms or microbes that can be into your soils. Now your microbes will help to remove some of the toxicity that is in your garden soils. And then again, it will help to loosen the soils and will help to increase the water holding capacity of your soils. And not only that, your, your microbes are really great at helping your plants uptake nutrients, whether it's nitrogen, phosphorus, and certain microbes will help either one, they help with vegetative growth, and all kinds of great stuff with microbes. But we'll dive into that in a, in a different episode. Now, researching back guano, I did come across a cool fun fact that I didn't even know, that in the early 18th century, that guano was actually mined to help produce gunpowder, which how in the world you're getting gunpowder out of worm cat or out of bat guano, I don't know that answer, but that was one of the leading causes of why there were a lot of caves that were developed back in the early 18th century was for harvesting of bat guano. Now, you might ask yourself, how do I use this bat guano? So I've personally used it a lot of times. I typically use it in a compost tea. And again, depending on which one we use is going to determine whether I'm gonna use it in a vegetative growth or if I'm gonna use it once I get into my flowering cycle. Now I like to brew my compost teas with I like worm castings. Again, you've got a lot of those micronutrients and you do have some beneficial micro and macronutrients in there as well. So let's say we're going to make this compost tea in the vegetative growth. What I will do is I'll take one cup of worm castings, one to two teaspoons of the bat guano. Again, high nitrogen is what I'm going to use in my vegetative growth. And then I'll add a half a cup of molasses. And I'll brew that for about 48 hours. That way I get all that microbial activity. I'm breaking down my macros and micros to become available to my plants. Um, let's say we want to use it in just our soils. Again, in a container, we're only going to do about one to two tablespoons per gallon of soil that's in there. Now, if you're on a large scale, you're on an outdoor level, it's going to be one to two pounds per hundred square feet. So what I've learned in the past is that nit or high nitrogen bat guano is easily can burn your plants. That's why I always go very, very small amounts, especially the ones that's in a powder form. That stuff will break down so fast and becomes readily available faster than some of the larger pellet size. So I just did a quick rundown. Now I do carry at the uh, at Gay City Gardening and Brew, I carry the down to earth bat guanos and I also carry the Roots Organics. 
Now you will notice that there is a little higher nitrogen in the roots versus the down to earth brand. Now typically I would use maybe 25% less in my mixture of the roots organics just because the nitrogen is a little bit higher and I'd like to try to avoid burning my plants. So when I see nitrogen that's that high, cut it down a little bit. You can always add more, but it's hard to take it back out of your soils once you have put it in there. So I hope this helps you to understand how to use bat guanos, why to use the bat guanos, and what type to use. And now I've had a hard time finding some of the ones that were higher in phosphorus, because I know years ago I could find some of the Indonesian that was basically very low in nitrogen but high in phosphorus. Now what I can find the most of is the seabird guano, which again, seabird guano, it's again with their diets, they're gonna eat a lot more fruits, so you're gonna have higher phosphorus. So depending on what life cycle of your plant is going to determine what type of guanos that you're gonna use, and when to use them. Again, thanks for tuning in with me and uh, stay tuned for some more episodes. Thank you.